One of the main new features in the just released DxO Photo Lab 8 is an all new Hue Mask. In this video, we're going to be running through some Hue Mask tips, look at its strengths and weaknesses to help beginners get the most out of it. So let's get right into it. The first step is to understand how the Hue Mask works. To understand its operation, let's work with this image, which is simply a gradient which moves from orange to yellow. Let's use the Hue Mask to mask the regions in orange. I'll click on the Hue Mask. As you can see, this turns the cursor into a picker. I'll pick on an area with the orange color. I'll switch to black and white mode to get a better view of the mask. As you can see, DxO masks all the areas matching the selected color, and it's shown represented as white in the mask. However, in regions which transition to yellow, you can see that the mask's opacity is reduced. And when the color finally turns to yellow, the mask is no longer applied, as it is shown in black. One property of the hue mask is it can be applied to a range of tones. To extend the range, I'll move the handles to cover both the orange and yellow colors. By doing that, as you can see, the image becomes fully masked. Let's look at another gradient, which gradually darkens from orange to black. How will the hue mask work in this situation? Interestingly, DxO applies the mask pretty leniently. Even when the color becomes significantly darker, the mask applied looks similar to the one applied to the selected color. However, as the colors move very close to black, you can see DxO abruptly reduces the mask's strength until it no longer is applied. Interestingly, compared to the gradual transition of colors in the image, the mask is not as smooth with a pretty abrupt transition. Next, let's look at the final image. In this example, the gradient increases in brightness. Once again, I'll mask the regions with orange color. As you can see, unlike in the previous example, where for the most part, the mask was evenly applied, even on darker tones, in this case, the hue mask seems to be more discriminating, reducing the opacity for even slight increases in brightness. Once again, the actual mask is not as smooth as the underlying image. So that was a look at the hue mask's behavior. What can we conclude from it? I would say the test shows that the hue mask can be very sensitive to even minute variations in tone and color. The masks generated are also not as predictable as its range mask sibling, the luminosity mask. So that was the first tip understand the behavior, let's move on to the next step. The next step is to know when to apply the hue mask. Based on the above test, the hue mask is best applied on the following conditions. First, the object to be masked is represented by a unique saturated color. Do note that the hue mask does not work well with desaturated or even poorly saturated colors. Second, it is best to be used on objects where there is minimal variation in saturation and brightness, as these can easily cause errors, as shown in our demonstration. Here is an example of one such image. As you can see, the lady's dress is characterized by a unique color. Let's make it stand out. Before we use the hue mask, let's use DxO's traditional masking tools, control point, and control line to better appreciate the difference in workflow. I'll use the control point to mask the dress. I'll refine the mask by increasing chroma to give more weightage to color and decrease luma to lessen the reliance on brightness. As you can see, it is a better fitting mask. I'll make the adjustments to enhance the dress. I'll increase exposure, micro contrast, and saturation to make the dress stand out. Next, I'll work on the background. I'll perform the same steps, but this time I'll use the control line. Once again, I'll adjust chroma and luma 
for a better fitting mask. I'll make the adjustments. And there you go, a pretty good result. However, you might have noticed there are quite a number of steps involved. Let's see if the Hue mask can get the job done faster. With the Hue mask selected, I'll pick a color from the dress. And boom, with just one click, a nicely fitting mask is created. I'll use the handles to further refine the mask. One benefit of the Hue mask is its support for brush and erase tools to refine the mask. As a reminder, both brush and erase is not supported when masking with control point and control line. I'll use the erase tool to remove any incorrectly masked areas. I'll make the adjustments. Next, I'll move on to the background. I'll pick a color and just like that, most of the background is selected. I'll perfect the mask by increasing the range. I'll make the adjustments. And there you have it, the same result achieved with significantly less effort. Let's look at another example. Once again, I'll use the Hue mask to take advantage of the unique colors in the image. I'll mask the sky and water. As you can see, with just one click, I've done most of the work. Once again, I'll refine the mask with a brush and erase tool. There, a nice looking mask. I'll decrease the exposure. I'll apply DxO's powerful clear view adjustment to make the selected regions pop. Next, I'll brighten the woman's skin. Finally, I'll retouch the grass. Unfortunately though, in this case, DxO is having difficulty masking the grass. And even as I expand the range, large swaths of the grass remain unselected. So that was the second tip. Let's move on to the third. The third tip is to be aware of disadvantages of the Hue mask. While the previous examples show the power of Hue Mask, it's also best to be aware of some disadvantages to avoid unnecessary frustration in the use of this tool. The first disadvantage is the lack of accuracy. Looking at this image, intuitively we would conclude the skin is represented by a unique color. Let's use the Hue Mask to mask the skin. Unfortunately though, as you can see, the mask created is extremely rough with very harsh transitions between dark and light, even for small color variation. With such a result, it's best to try other masking alternatives. Here's another example. Once again, to human eyes, it is probable that we would perceive a large difference between the skin and, and the hair color. Let's again mask the skin with Hue Mask. And as you can see, the Hue Mask is unable to distinguish between the skin and the hair. The second disadvantage has to do with masking interoperability. Let's use the Hue mask to target the distinct blue color of the sky. Once again, the result is highly erratic, but can we refine it? Unfortunately though, as previously stated, the Hue mask only works with the standard brush and erase tool, both of which have no edge detection. As such, the amount of precision you can achieve in the refinement process is limited. If this is an issue, one alternative I would recommend is to bypass the Hue mask altogether and simply use either the auto masking tool or brush tool in conjunction with the HSL tool for a more competent adjustment as I'm doing here. So there you have it. That's three tips for using the Hue mask. As you can see, while the Hue mask is a solid addition to DxO's masking tools, it's important to be aware of its strengths and limitations in order to avoid unrealistic expectations and be able to maximize its use. So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know what you think of DxO's Hue Mask. Are you going to be using it? And if you have any other Hue Mask tips, write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.